What's going on guys and welcome to the 59th Xamarin Android tutorial. So this video is going to be concentrated on how to actually set up an on-touch listener for the frame layout, which is what's needed to drag it up, okay? So we got to the point to where we can animate it up and have it visible, but we can't drag it up like, like how we want to and show the rest of the, the fragment. Now, we can keep kind of pushing this button and it'll keep going up. So we, do, we only want it to animate once while it's showing, right? So we'll have to actually implement some code to stop it from doing that. So there's a few things that we need to do, but the main thing is we want to be able to drag it. Well, in order to drag something in Android, in this case is no different with a frame layout, we need an on-touch listener, okay? So we need to set an on-touch listener on the fragment for a container. And what we, well, the way we can do that is set on-touch listener, and we'll pass it this, okay? Because fragment three, in this case, we'll actually, we're gonna, ha we're gonna actually implement that. So it's uh, I on view, or I'm sorry, view dot I on touch listener. And if we actually right click refactor implement interface, it will implement the interface that's needed, the, the methods that are needed to implement it correctly, which is just one, just on touch. So what is this saying? Well, this is saying that whenever this is touched in any sort of way, on touch will be called. All right. So we could do a lot with this. What we could do now is we can actually manipulate some stuff and we can get the values of how much is touched and kind of move it and stuff. So we can essentially drag it. Now, it's common to use a switch case in this case because of the fact that there's many kind of different touches, right? Well, we only need to really two, we only need to cover two cases. And one of them is down and the other one is move. So move, or I'm sorry, down gets called when it's first touched down and that's it, okay? So it's really only called once for that, for that, that dragging. And what we could do with this is we can actually get the initial position that it was touched on, all right? So what we want to do is we want to come up here. We want to get a, we want to actually create a global float value and we'll call it M last position or plus Y, okay? So that'll suffice. And then let's come into here and we're going to want to have a case. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to actually set the position of which it was touched. All right, and the way we could do that is we can say last position y equals e which is from the emotion vet the second parameter in the on touch method and we can do get y so that'll give us the y coordinate of where it was touched at all right and then it'll save it so then we can just and after that return true that this touch event has been handled now the next thing that we're going to want to do the next kind of touch event is the last one that we're going to need to handle is that's the move okay so this is kind of when the user starts to drag it if they ever do now, what's gonna happen here? Well, this is where most of the match is gonna happen. So first we need the current position. And we can do uh, var current position equals e dot get y. So that's, this will give us the current position that's at. So this gives us the last position, and then this, this gives us the current position. So then we can get delta, we can get delta y, the difference of the two, and how much basically it has moved by doing last position minus current position. All right, so let's go through a scenario say a scenario when when we start from here well this will be this will be say say give it an arbitrary value of like 200 and then when we move up say the current position is now here say 150 so last position will be 200 and then it's called what's just called many many times a second but let's just make it a little easier so the the last position is 200 and then say that the current position is now 150 so we'll do 200 right we're gonna do 200 minus 150. So delta Y will be 50. So we can, we know that, that the user has moved it 50 pixels or whatnot, all right? So that's good. that's kind of the way, they, the thinking that we're gonna be doing with. So now we can have a another variable that keeps tra track of the translation Y. Because remember that the way we animated it is we, we mess with the translation of Y. So we're gonna do the same thing. We're actually gonna just do var translate equals V and we can get V or we could do fragment container, whichever is easier. But V is the current view that's being implemented or, or dragged in this case, which is the fragment container. So we can do V and then we can do translation Y. So we want to get the current translation. What is the current translation? And remember the translation is what actually moves it up and down and kind of hides it and whatnot. All right. So we want to get the current translation and then we want to do trans Y minus equals delta y. 
So we want them to minus equal the delta y. So say if the translation was in fact 200 and then we want to move it up to, we move to 150. Well, we've moved it 50 pixels. So we want to actually minus equals it. Cause remember the less that we show it, the, the less the, the less of the translation y, the, the more it's going to show. And we, we went over that a little bit in the last video, but the way it works is basically we're almost, this is a little over, but we're say, say at, at zero translation. Well, when we push it down, it's almost like a margin top. The more translation, the more it's going to be pushed down. Therefore, the less translation, the more it's going to be shown and pushed up, which therefore is shown. So that's why we're doing minus equals right here. All right. So we're doing minus equals to make it show more. Or when you do minus equals and it's a negative value, it's actually going to increase the translation, right? Because the minus and minus makes a positive. And then we'll, we'll actually uh, increase the translation, therefore show, uh, hiding it. And that's when the user is moving it down. So hiding it. All right. So that's going to work out perfectly. But we do want to normalize it. So we want we don't want it to ever go less than zero. So we don't want we don't want the translation to ever go less than zero. So if the trans is less than y, less than zero, then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to set it back to zero. And then what we're going to do is we'll do we'll actually set the translation. Okay, so we'll set it back now that we've calculated everything we'll actually set it back to what it's supposed to be now, depending on how much the user has dragged it and whatnot. And there you go. All right, so so to stay over it again, we, we get the delta, we see how much that the user has moved. We, we actually increment or decrement the value here. We check to see if it's less than zero. If it is less than zero, we wanna set it back to zero. Less than zero, meaning that it is actually, uh, it's, it's overextended, okay? So it's never gonna overextend now because it's gonna reset it back to zero. And then of course we can bring it back down. All right. And then this is going to set, this is what ultimately animates the actual value because this is called so many times we get that smooth effect of it animating. And that's because on, on touch is called so many times a second. All right. So this value right here is what actually does the animating of the, and the, and the dragging, if you will, of the, of the frame layout and therefore the fragment. So that being said, Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and, and see if this is working the way we expect it to. So we need to actually return a certain value. So we need actually a default case. So that's what it's complaining about. And that's because if none of these are true, then we want to actually return true. And what we can actually do is call upon its base method. It's based on touch of it and pass it. Uh, it wants an event and we'll pass it E, which is right here. All right, so if all else fails, just return the normally, do what you would have normally done, essentially is what it's saying. Let's bring the emulator up. All right, let's come into fragment three. And you can see now that we are now able to drag it. So there you go, guys. Now there's, there is one flaw, and that is if you have it right here and you can actually still kind of do that, you know, which which maybe isn't so bad, but in order to fix that, what we want to do is we want to say that we only want it to actually animate when it's fully gone. All right. But right now it's animating still wherever it's at. Okay. And it kind of hides the button and you can still kind of get to it from right there. So where does it animate? Well, it animates up here, right? Inside of the button click. Well, what we can do is just add a little if statement. And what we can do with that is actually first check to see what the translation is. So we could say, okay, if translation y is greater than or equal to the fragment container dot height. So if it's greater than its height, then then we know that it's okay to animate. Okay. So what I mean by that is if the translation is greater than its height. So if the translation say is it starts off at um, at about 400 so that it's fully gone. So if it's, if it's hidden, so if it's, if this height say is an arbitrary value, say of 400 and the translation is also 400 or 401 or two or three, that means that it's fully invisible. It's, it's fully hidden at that point. If it's less than that, that means it's actually probably showing. And what I've noticed is sometimes that it's actually a little less value. So just to give it some leeway, add a, add a like a plus two to it, just to, just to make sure that, that this value is greater when it's about hitting. Cause sometimes there's a pixel that, that doesn't kind of uh, calculate or something and this value will actually be less and then 
even though you can't see it, it still won't animate. So, so I just add a little plus two to kind of give it some offset, but this will basically ensure now that it will only animate when it's fully hidden from, from view. Let's go ahead and verify that now. Let's go into fragment three. So notice that now when we click it, it's not going to animate until we actually move it all the way back down and bring it back up. So something like that. All right. And there's, there's other things that you guys can do with this, but this kind of gives you a, hopefully a starting point if you're looking on doing something like that, like a lot like how Google Maps was doing it or, or some of the other popular applications that were doing that. Um, you can actually really, you know, kind of make it happen when you delete something, maybe give it an undo or some stuff like that that makes it really nice when you when you want to add a little extra space and kind of give it more than just a dialogue, but another another fragment basically that has all the full power of an activity, but simply still hidden and more power than just like a normal kind of dialogue fragment or a, or a toast uh, text or something like that. All right, so. There you have it. That's how to do that. And that pretty much completes a lot of the a lot of the project that we were working on when we started the frame layout stuff. However, there's probably another video I can go over which is just some more stuff about frame layouts and kind of like getting a little more equating with them. But at this point, uh, hopefully you're pretty comfortable with frame layouts and, and how to use them and how to hide them and kind of how to manipulate them in, in ways that to do what you want to do. And what, what's really nice about them is just they're just another views, right? The fragments. So we can um, you can do a whole bunch of stuff here like we did a little uh, find view by ID. So you can really just use it just like you would at activity and, and um, return that and then kind of go from there, but still have them in a frame layout and be able to animate them and, and do some really cool stuff with them and, and bring them from the bottom, the top, you know, really whatever you want. And like I said before, when we started this, this project a few videos ago, what happened, uh, it's, it's really great because what, what, what happened was, you know, it got really uh, cumbersome to kind of re-implement an activity. So after you know 3.0, Android came out with the fragment that really took care of a lot of stuff that once you have an activity kind of ready, the the drawer, the drawer and all that, you can just keep implementing a frame layout and kind of just keep showing fragments and therefore not have to re-implement stuff. So they're really good for that and a lot of other things. But uh, if you guys do have any questions or anything like that, be sure to, to comment below. I'll do my best to answer any questions or continue more videos if there's any more questions on fragments or frame layouts or, or any of the uh, stuff regarding those, okay? So thanks for watching, guys.